guys what's happening. So, I always kind of wonder about these antennas, these uh, Stardust antennas. So, kind of a good deal on this one on eBay. 84 bucks. Looks like it's a, a actually legit Starduster from Sirio, made in Italy. So I don't know if it's a good knockoff or I mean it was pretty cheap, cheaper like half the cost of normally cost. I mean it looks pretty legit, made in Italy. So um, if you're new to my channel, I uh, <clears throat> do a lot of like I mess around with CBs and 3D printers and CNC machines and I work in IT for a living. Industrial automation, more like the back end IT stuff, uh, communications, that kind of stuff. But kind of got back into my CB radio hobby again, so I've been restoring CBs, recapping them, doing stuff. So, um, designing antennas. So, I just recently put up a horizontal dipole, you know, messing with different, uh, different chokes, different stuff, balance chokes, um, designing boxes. But so, yeah, I wanted to give this antenna a shot here. Um, yeah, what's funny that I, I've, you know, I, I, the last time I was in the CBs was, you know, like, yeah, maybe like 10 years ago, maybe. I kind of go, I go in and out of it in waves, you know. Well, if I get occupied, you know, like, recently I was, I've been designing 3D printers, so I'm kind of doing 3D printers and CNC machines, and, but, uh, I like having the radios and stuff as a backup. More of a, I don't like talking to the radios so much, but it's more of like emergency preparedness. Um. So what I was saying earlier, a second ago, was that some people say this is like a really good skip antenna. Um, it's a quarter wave, so it's not. Like, so I, I do actually have a halfway dipole on the roof. Uh, it's horizontal right now, but I'm picking up a lot of electrical noise. Uh, let me show you that real fast. I have power lines all around my house. Look at those huge power lines. So I'm thinking because we're having a horizontal dipole configuration. Um, when I have the horizontal dipole configuration, I'm just pick up a lot of electrical noise. And I made, I don't think I've uploaded the videos, uploaded the videos yet of my dipole setup. Custom made a 3D printed house and everything, so. Alright, so I'm going to take this off and hook it up and take a look at it. You know, even the, this whole time I'm kind of listening, it seems like in the last couple of years, CB radio is really, a lot of people have gotten back into it, but just, CB radio just seems like it's more interesting than ham radio, the, the people on it, you know. It's kind of hilarious. Um, all right, so looks like it has like this center thing here. It's a plastic. So what I'll do, I'll see if there's any weaknesses and I'll design replacement parts. You know, see if I can make this thing more stable. Because a lot of people have complained about this. These little things right here not breaking. So if there's any improvements I can make, I'll design them. Yeah, this is a quarter wave ground plane antenna. I don't even know what that means yet, but, okay, frequency guide, I'll take a look at that, but one thing that always intrigued me about these antennas was this little part right here. Um, what does that do? <laughs> it's a ground plane, so you have the ground plane radials, yeah, but that's on the positive side, so what does that do? The little down things, you know, because it's not, it's not grounded. I don't know. Yeah, I might have an issue here. The condo that I have on my roof is um, inch and a half, but um, this looks like it's size is that uh, measuring tape. It looks like it's probably uh, maybe an inch and a half. Yeah, inches right there, so. I mean, I got to I don't know. Um, yeah, either I have to buy a new piece of conduit, a thicker conduit, or I design some sort of adapter to adapt um, this conduit. Let me show you why. Because this, this conduit is not big enough to grab onto it. Yeah, see the two set screws right there? The set screws aren't going to go in there further, far enough to, to grab onto it. So there's enough set screw to clamp down on it. So if I create an adapter, there's enough set screw to, to, to clamp onto it. So I need to do the same for both here and there. So yeah, we shouldn't take a long time. 
stick in a couple minutes to die when I'm using 360. All right, so I'm putting on some uh, pull adapters out of ASA. So ASA is more like a more uh, UV resistant um, ABS. So typically on this printer, I'll do like the ASA PLA. That one I'll do ABS. And then the rest of my other super fast printer, I'll do like a PLA, PLA plus, that kind of stuff. All right, I got the Starduster up. So it comes in through my thing into my tenant switch in here. So in the tenant switches, it goes two wires feed up here to the front workbench. Then the other two wires feed into my SDR player here, which then feeds back into my, my home computer, which is my main computer. That's what's cool about these analyzers is you know exactly where it's resonant. So, I mean, I can make this a little bit longer or shorter. Um, so in my case, it would, have, it would need to be shorter. Um, I could probably go like a half inch shorter. Um, but the peak is like 1.3 was the lowest. And that's a 27.4. So if I went a, little, a half inch shorter, I'd probably get it in there. But it's a headache to pull up and down. So <laughs> I'll be fine with that. So yeah, because I'm actually about right here where I want to be 385. So... I don't know. I'll think about it. Yeah, it is a pretty big antenna. <laughs> it looks a little extreme. I don't know. It's a lot bigger than the scan antenna I had up there, but um, at the same time, it has less radial. So, um, all right, we'll see how that works. All right, so this version is my scanner antenna. That's why it's UHF VHF. Um, I think it's like RG213. I don't think it's LR400. Um, but it goes into this cheap piece of. Um, RG58, so I might upgrade that to something better. Um, Alright, so I gotta go to the bench. Yeah, those antenna switches are horrible. I've actually read. I gotta take it apart and rewire it internally. VHF, VHF. Yeah, is this antenna not working right? Antenna switch? Yeah, I'm still getting a horrible SWR. So. Hmm. That's like a bad piece of coax. Um, yeah, because I'm feeding this from... I, I just ran a dedicated feed over there just to test it because this is... You had the antenna... No, actually I had it connected directly to the... to the. This is a really cheap piece of coax. I should see this is even... It should be RG58. Alright, well I gotta figure that out. So I, yeah, because of that antenna switch I can really see how bad that switch sucks. With the, when I have it hooked into the switch, it was gone up to 1.6 SWR. So, I've actually seen people online with those uh, make videos about shorting the wires. Like they're just slapply. They're in, internally, they're they're built slapply. I also have this hooked up to my present grant. Because it gets on my do a receive gain um, on the amp. But just the noise floor alone is so much better than the horizontal dipole. I just have too many power lines here for the horizontal dipole. I think it just picks up so much noise. So much more clear though, the noise floor. We're not even at peak right now. It's still pretty early in the day, so usually for me in, in the uh, Newport Beach customized area, in the afternoon is when I pick up the max signals in the afternoon. So, well, I guess in my area I need to run a vertical. Horizontal just like, that's not going to work out. So now I know I gotta upgrade my wires. This thing sucks. Now this is horrible, you can tell. That's not gonna work, and um, I, I might do RG213 all the way here. Gotta look at the switch, upgrade the coax. And, uh, look how clear that is. Well, compared to my other antennas, this is incredible. So that's Stardust, your antenna is awesome. Hey, turn right to their world radio, 0767, sounding good in my receipt, PS. Yeah, I'm picking up uh, Hawaii, Australia, New Zealand. Yeah. This, this radio is actually incredible, this old, original Japanese made President Grant. First generation, E5H chassis. Yeah, uh, well, it actually is way better than this one, the Super, uh, what's it called, the uh, Sears Docker, 146 GTL motherboard. Kind of 
listening for him there, but uh, I thought I heard him earlier. The noise floor is so much further down. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It's a quarter wave antenna, but I'm still trying to figure out what those downward radials on the top are, you know? Halfway through the top. <laughs> I'm guessing it's to amplify the signal back into the ground plane to bounce out. So it kind of creates like a double effect, you know? It goes radiate up and it radiates back down and it hits the ground plane and goes up. That's my guess. Zero five, zero seven, Kentucky on the side. Yeah, the noise floor is incredible. Way down. So my horizontal dipole was just uh, picked up too much noise. And in the vertical position, in the vertical position, it was awesome, but I couldn't get a low SWR. I think I was just too high or something. Yeah, I'm picking up people from everywhere now. So this is the this is the antenna I actually went from. So I had one of those little cheapo tram. This I think worked in a tram. I can't remember. One of those cheap little base station antennas. It actually picked up pretty good. Picked up alright. Yeah, but nobody could hear me. So earlier I made a contact with somebody from Florida. And then uh, on the horizontal dipole, I, I talked to someone in Canada. But on this one, the first time I, I shot out, I picked up somebody in Florida. So, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, pretty, I'm pretty new. I mean, I've, I've been playing with CBs my whole life, but not really. I don't know. I mean, I kinda, it kind of goes in and out of phases, so... Um, Alright, cool antenna. It was like 84 bucks. Put a link down where I put it on EBA, but it was like $100 for shipping and taxes. So, alright. Cool.